This is Boot Camp. Boot Camp 101. <laughs> All right. So today we're going to do something a little different. Well, not a little different, really. It's the same thing, slightly differently. I want all you guys to sit up straight, Anthea. This is not a relaxing, reclining, get yourself a hard back chair, put a thumbtack under your ass and listen. Ready? Focus. No lolly gagging. This is boot camp. Lolly gaggers are not, around, not allowed. No slack jawed gawpers. You're not an observer. Oh, you haven't heard that one, Gemma? Slack jawed gawper. You know what? You, so, gawper fish, right? Gawper fish, like, I, I don't know if that's the right name for them, but that's what I call them slack jawed gawpers. Gawper fish swim around the ocean like this with their mouth open and little tiny microscopic things go in and they just feed like that. They don't have to chew or nothing. They just swallow everything. Right? Where I live up here, it's a big tourist area just up the road. And we have people from like everywhere all over the world, like backpackers and whatever come there. And they walk up and down the tourist area like this. And I call them the slack jawed gawpers. They're not really, they're not really switched on, tuned in or nothing. They're, they're generally like retirees that have uh, gotten on some big junket bus trip to the town, you know, and they walk around uh, <laughs> gawping at everything. And so that's where I get that saying. We're not like that. No slack jawed gawpers here. Okay. So lesson 10, don't pick up your books. Put your book down and listen, all right? We're going to do lesson 10 together, all at the same time, all of us. Now, you guys are all mooted. I think you all are. Vivian's not for some reason. Vivian, can you mute your microphone? There we go. <laughs> I'm going to read this lesson all the way through. At the end of the lesson, we're going to apply it. And out aloud, so you can hear yourself say it, I want you to spend a minute in mind searching. Okay? A minute in mind searching with these lessons. And it's going to put us all on the same page. Okay? My thoughts do not mean anything. Lesson 10. This idea applies to all the thoughts of which you are aware or become aware in the practice periods. The reason the idea is applicable to all of them is that they are not your real thoughts. We have made this distinction before and will again. You have no basis for comparison as yet. When you do, you will have no doubt that what you once believed were your thoughts did not mean anything. This is the second time we have used this kind of idea. The form is only slightly different. This time the idea is introduced with my thoughts instead of these thoughts, and no link is made overtly with the things around you. The emphasis is now on the lack of reality of what you think you think. This aspect of the correction process began with the idea that the thoughts of which you are aware are meaningless outside rather than within, and then stressed their past rather than their present status. Now we are emphasizing that the presence of these thoughts means that you are not thinking. This is merely another way of repeating our earlier statement that your mind is really a blank. To recognize this is to recognize nothingness when you think you see it. As such, it is the prerequisite for vision. Close your eyes for these exercises and introduce them by repeating the idea for today quite slowly to yourself 
then add this idea will help me to release will help to release me from all that i now believe the exercises consist as before in searching your mind for all the thoughts which are available to you without selection or judgment try to avoid classification of any kind in fact if you find it helpful to do so you might imagine that you are watching an oddly assorted procession going by, which has little, if any, personal meaning to you. As each one crosses your mind, say, this thought about something does not mean anything. That thought about whatever does not mean anything. Today's idea can obviously serve for any thought that distresses you at any time. In addition, five practice periods are recommended, each involving no more than a minute or so of mind training, mind searching. <clears throat> it is not recommended that this time period be extended and it should be reduced to half a minute or even less if you experience discomfort. Remember, however, to repeat the idea slowly before applying it specifically and also to add this idea will help to release me from all that I now believe. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply the lesson. I want you guys to just listen, okay? Just listen. My thoughts do not mean anything. This thought about having an itchy leg does not mean anything. This idea will help to release me from all I now believe. This thought about the sun outside does not mean anything. This thought will help to release me from all I now believe. My thoughts about not having had breakfast do not mean anything. <laughs> This thought will help to release me from all I now believe. My thought about my beanie does not mean anything. This thought will help to release me from all I now believe. My thought about not finding any thoughts does not mean anything. This thought will help to release me from all I now believe. My thought about the light does not mean anything. This thought will help to release me from all I now believe. My thought about my nipple does not mean anything. This thought will help to release me from all I now believe. My thought about this itchy dressing gown does not mean anything. This thought will help to release me from all I now believe. My thought about the sun getting brighter does not mean anything. This thought will help to release me from all I now believe. My thought about the birds singing in the tree outside does not mean anything. This thought will help to release me from all I now believe. My thoughts do not mean anything. Okay. Any thought that crosses your mind, suitable subject matter for the application of today's idea. Okay, now close your eyes and I want you to say it out aloud to yourselves as if you're in this group, but just out aloud, okay? Starting with my thoughts do not mean anything, and then whatever the thought is, this thought will help to release me from all I now believe, and then on to the next. Go for it. Out aloud, speak it out. My thoughts do not mean anything. My thought about blah does not mean anything. 
This thought will help to release me from all I now believe. Eyes closed. Then on to the next one. Try not to discriminate against the different thoughts in your mind. Anyone is suitable. bit longer. My thoughts do not mean anything. My thought about does not mean anything. This thought will help to release me from all I now believe. Okay, finish up on your next thought. Good. All done. Good. So I only ever react to my thoughts. It's my thoughts that tell me where I am and what I am. But all of my thoughts are meaningless. Why would I react to my thoughts? Why would I react at all to figures in a dream if I truly knew I was dreaming? I would stay peaceful. And in my zone, I'd be there in my own mind, in my Christ-minded sense of self in the world, but not of it. I only react to my thoughts. Say that to yourself. I only react to my thoughts. I only react to my thoughts. I'm not reacting to a person out there or a situation out there 
or an event out there. I'm reacting to my own thoughts about it. All form is illusory. The world is a dream, an illusion. The people, my own body, animals, trees, none of it exists. Learning to see with the vision of Christ, I see beyond all form to God. I see the animating force that is the, the creative origin of everything I think I see. I look past it. I look past the body. I see my same familiar friends and family, but now I look past their body. I see what it is that is animating that body, making the arms move and the face smile. I look past that smile, past those moving arms. How is that possible? Where does the power source come from from this? What is the meaning of the thing that I see? What gives it meaning? Where does that come from? Let me see the truth of this being not the image that is portrayed through their movements and their verbiage. I want to see the truth. I walk through the shopping mall and there's a thousand people in there coming and going. They're all my brothers, not the bodies, not the forms, but the animating force the light being that is inhabiting or utilizing that body, the light being, just as I am utilizing my body, the being of light that is manifesting its own presence, just as I am manifesting my own presence. It's like a hologram. So a hologram is like this clear piece of plastic or whatever it's made of, crystal or something, and it has the entire picture on it. If you snap a little bit off, the whole picture stays exactly the same and you have the whole picture in the piece that you snap off. It's incredible. It's like if you take a normal two-dimensional painting and you cut a bit off, that piece that... Is, that remains the big piece has a chunk out of it and the little piece that you have in your hand that you've cut off seems to be only a section of the whole picture but in a hologram when you snap a bit off the whole picture is contained in the hologram i have no clue how that works right and the big picture isn't missing anything it's still the same okay you are like a hologram Imagine a whole bunch of holograms stacked on top of each other. Here's the Viviana hologram. I'm holding it in my hand, this A4 hologram, and I lay it on a stack with 6.5 or 7.5 billion other holograms, and I shine a light through it. Okay? It seems to be in every hologram, it's the same image. Viviana's doing whatever she's doing. All the other images and things are doing whatever they're doing. All of a sudden, Viviana says, hang on a minute. I'm going to extract my whole hologram. I'm out of this. I'm done. I'm not playing this game anymore. You can't just do a bit of it. You can't break a bit of it off. You've got to take the whole thing out. Otherwise, the whole thing is going to remain of you in the with the light shining through, right? You have to give up the whole world, the entirety of it. We're taking your hologram out, and then there'll be a world, all your cast and create cast and crew and characters will be on your hologram that you've taken out but it won't have that negative light shining through it it won't have the denial light shining through it the dark light it'll be what it is it'll just be blank it won't be imprinted with the dream okay that's your mind we're going to extract it from the dream and hold it out here where the holy spirit can just like go whoop, and get the duster in the classroom and, and dust it off and make it clean again Okay. that's the process that's happening here. That's the holy instant. That's the moment where I'm choosing, I'm giving up the world. I'm done with this. I want something else, not this. 
but you've got to want it for your whole hologram, for everyone and everything in it. Not just the bit you think contains you down there in the corner and you can just break that bit off and you've done it for you because it'll still remain in evidence. That whole hologram still has you in it. Okay. It's bizarre science. I don't know how it works, but it's like you can Google holograms. There was a book once, I don't know if it's still in publication, called The Holographic Universe. It's pretty good. It's like it's a kind of a nice book to read and it's sort of a, like another more um, scientific, I guess, perspective on things. But back to boot camp. Ida, have you got somewhere else to go? No, I'm just, uh, uh, it makes me so cr cry. There's, there's, I feel misery about myself. Good. And yeah. And I, I feel very uh, uh, angry towards the creator because of the misery. So I never tend not Good. to go there, but I guess that's where I'm going to disappear. Right. You're not angry towards the creator. You're angry at yourself. You just want to project it onto God because your mind projects. You're not at that place yet where you're laying there on your back in that concrete thing with the sergeant standing over you. And you're not at that place where you're saying, I got nowhere else to go. Right. I'm acting as if I am more stronger. Uh, I can handle Right. So stop, so stop acting as if you're more stronger. Let yourself fall into a heap. Let that happen. Stop defending yourself against what it is that's waiting to happen in you. Because okay. that's literally your release. Stop defending yourself against it. So that's the whole story. No, stop it. The next thought that's meaningless that just pops into your head. Remember, we just did my thoughts don't mean anything. Yeah. Now, you straight away want to go back, look at your thoughts and tell me something. So just as if it's going to help. Mm. It's not going to help you. You have to feel it. You can't work it out in your head. Ida, you can't work this out. You've got to let it fall into a heap. You can't decide how to let it fall into a heap. You're already in a heap. I can tell you that. You're already fallen into a heap. You just won't let yourself recognize it. There's a place in you where you just let it all go and just went, fuck it. <laughs> Look at Gemma. That's the face of someone who says, fuck it on a daily basis. Even her hair, look at her hairstyle. It's like her hairstyle says, fuck it. I can't be bothered today. Fuck it. <laughs> oh, is that, a is that actually meant to be a style? Sorry. I thought maybe it was just a... Oops. <laughs> My bad. Anyway, back to Ida. Can you hear what I'm saying, Ida? Say no. Right. So close your eyes. Let's take a breath. Ready? You got no place else to go. Breathe. You got no place else to go. Let that in. You got no place else to go. Stop trying to be strong. Stop trying to be brave. Stop trying to hold it all together. Let it fall apart. Holding it together is hard work. It sucks. It's full of judgment, full of self-judgment, full of denial, full of all sorts of stuff that's not really good for you. Let it fall in a heap. Let it happen. The universe is trying to orchestrate something for you 
to give you a leg up. And you're still trying to hold your old world all together. I got this, Lord. I can do this. No, you can't. Peter, you can't. It literally takes a miracle. You can't do it. If you still think you can do it, get out there into the job market and the, and the you know, where everybody else thinks they can do it too. You're in a Zoom meeting of A Course in Miracles, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Literally, for Christ's sake. Thank God. Right, thank God. By the grace of God, you've been lifted up by your little pigtails and brought over here to this Zoom meeting and dropped into a little box in the computer screen. And there's Ida going, oh, thank God I'm here. Yeah. Now, why you're here and you being here, let that connect. Let go of everything else. Let it fall apart. Let it fall apart. Let yourself just fall into God. You can't be brave. You can't be strong. You can't be anything. That's why it's called surrender. I surrender unconditionally. Here I am, Lord. Take me. Absolutely take me. I'm done with my mind games. I'm done trying to be strong. I'm done trying to play the game. I'm done. I've got nowhere else to go. <laughs> nowhere else to go. Feel it. I've got nowhere else to go. Let that in. God is my salvation. I'm here saying I want that. So why would I try to not show my weakness? Why would I try to not fall apart? Why would I try to be strong? What's the point? You're here under false pretenses. That's ridiculous. What do you get out of that? Fuck you, Dave. I sat through the whole Zoom meeting and I convinced all of you fuckers that I was actually a part of it. You're an asshole. My sponsor, Willem, used to say that to me every day. You're an asshole. He'd walk past me in the hall, just in the hall. He'd walk past and I'd go, morning, Willem. And he'd go, you're an asshole. And he'd keep walking. He wouldn't validate me at all. He called me out, he called me out where I was at. Right? There's never a point I'm not an asshole. There's never a point I'm not the denial. There's never a point where I'm not the one responsible for my own thinking. This is a place of total humility, total ownership, total responsibility. If I see suffering in the world, it's because I maintain it in my mind. Deliberately, not by accident, not because what are these thoughts doing in my head? How do I get them out of here? They're there because I want them there. They're there because I'm absolutely batshit crazy. That's why I need 365 lessons, lesson 10 telling me my thoughts don't mean anything. This is going to help to release me from everything I now believe. And here's me and my batshit crazy thoughts saying, I'll do that lesson, but I'll try to be strong. I'll try not to let my weakness show. Why? This is not the place for that. This is not the place for that. This is a place where we come honestly, to fall apart and to admit how vulnerable we are, to admit how much pain we're in. To our Father, here I am, Lord. I can't take this anymore. I can't take this anymore. I've got nowhere else to go. You are my salvation.
Jesus knocks on your door and says, come on, Eda, it's time to go. Yes, brother, I'm coming. You wouldn't sit there on your couch and try to hold it all together. You wouldn't sit there on your couch and try to be strong, try not to let everybody see what you're going through. We know what you're going through, Eda. We've been there. It's hell. It's horrible. There's nothing there that any of us wants. It's meaningless and pointless and it goes on and on and around and around and you die at the end. What is the freaking point? Stop trying to be strong. Let yourself fall into a blubbering heap or a laughing heap, whatever. I don't care which one. <laughs> Let yourself have this moment. This is it. It's not going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow, your ego is going to recover again. You're not going to have the boot sergeant, the drill sergeant with his stick standing there going, you're out, you're out. You've got this moment to realize you've got nothing else. You've got nowhere else to go. Let it in. Stop defending yourself against that. Let it in. I got nowhere else to go. I only got Jesus. That's it. Here I am, Lord. I'm coming. I'm right here, right now. I got nowhere else to go. And thank God for that. <laughs> in a world of crazy, batshit, crazy stuff that goes on in my head, I've got one thing going on in there that is my salvation. All I got to do is say yes. Jesus, hold out his hand, says, Eda, let's go. And you got to hold out your hand and say, yes, Lord. That's it. Not, yes, Lord, but what about my kids? Not, yes, Lord, but what about my job? Not, yes, Lord, but what about breakfast is uh, cooking on the stove? Let the house burn down. What does it matter? Let the kids become orphans. What does it matter? Let the whole world go to hell in a handbasket. What does it matter? It's a dream. It's an illusion. The matrix has you. <laughs> There's no red pill or blue pill. There's no red pill or blue pill. Now it's this. Maybe in 10,000 years, there'll be a red pill or a blue pill. You can just take it and like wake up. But for now, it's mind training. It's hard work. It's emotional confrontation. It's hard work. It's emotional release. It's hard work. The way is steep. The path is hard. And there are few who you will find on it. Two in 10,000. The way is steep. The path is hard. And there are few who we will find on it. We're on it. We're on the path. We trust that our kids, that our family and that our friends, they all have a journey in God too. They all have a soul journey, whether we're with them or not. You can be snuffed out in a car accident tomorrow and your kids will be left orphan. You can be snuffed out in an industrial accident tomorrow and your whole world, your bank finances and everything's just left in a mess. It'll organize itself. It'll sort itself out. The grace of God doesn't miss a beat. This is the time in the dream when Christ has come to you and said, Eda, we're going to take a step together beyond the veil. I want to show you something. She knows you're terrified to look. He knows you're terrified to actually pull that veil aside in your mind and see what reality is because it's going to null and void everything you think you see now. When everything disappeared for me, when I was standing in that room, 
and the people in front of me vanished, like literally vanished as if somebody changed the remote on the television. They went blink, they weren't there anymore and I could see a blank wall. I didn't even have time to say what the... It was done in a second. There was a blank wall, then the wall vanished and I could see all the houses and trees outside. Then that all vanished and my body vanished and I was back in eternity. And everyone was there. It's like, what the hell? What's going on? What is this? I didn't want to come back here. My family, my friends, everyone was there. Actually, the real version of them, not the dream version, not this fleshy, stinky thing that if you don't wash it, God damn, it smells. If you don't put poof-foof on it, you know, like it, it stinks. Who the hell likes these things? You try living here in, in Australia in the tropics, you don't have a shower for a day, you have flies that follow around your ass crack. You have all sorts of stuff. It's just like, it's disgusting. You got to have two showers a day here. You got to change your underwear twice. At least if you have a physical manual labor job outside, maybe three times. It's hard work maintaining a body. Jesus is saying, let's let go of our body. Let's let go of our world. Let's just for an instant, put it aside. Step out of it. Wake up to where we truly are and always have been in God. You can be angry at God all you want. Half the planet's running around being angry at God, completely ignorant of what they're doing to themselves. You're not angry at God. You're not angry at your God. You're angry at yourself. You wish you could die. Right, exactly. You wish you could end it all. I'm telling you, you can't. It's impossible. You're stuck with us. <laughs> you know, when I was 21, I took a jar of Valium, a whole jar of Valium, and I put a rope around my neck and I stood up on the garage, on a garbage bin. I was working at an industrial area and we had dongers. Right? Dongers are like little tiny little units. You've got a single bed. It's like a prison cell, really. Single bed, a little window, a cupboard for your clothes. It's basic. It's tiny. It's like eight foot wide and 10 foot long sort of thing. And there's like 150 blokes camped in these things doing this construction, right? It's a remote job. I had a total moment. And I don't know who found me, but the last thing I remember was laying on my back or something in a helicopter being helivacked off the island to the hospital. And I got to the hospital. And the last thing I remember in the hospital, I'm going in and out of this kind of daze or something's happening, you know, like in and out of this thing. And I remember the doctor saying, bring the stomach pump. Right? That was the last thing I remember. And then the thing that I remember after that was, it's not your time yet. I don't know who said that. I don't know who said that. It was pitch black. It's not your time yet. And then I woke up in the morning and there's my parents who'd flown up from a thousand kilometers away, standing at the foot of my bed, waiting for me to come to. Tears in their eyes, the whole thing. It wasn't my time then. I don't know if I tried that again today. Maybe it would be my time now. <laughs> I've done some work, Jesus. What about now? <laughs> but that's not the way. But you wish that was the way, Ida. If you had a way out, you would just like do it straight away. But you know somewhere in there you don't. I'm your way out. Tina's your way out. Michelle, Bibiana, Vivian, Anna, Gemma, Anthea. Your mighty companions your brothers in Christ, your brother's keepers. We are your way out and every other brother on the planet actually, but learning to see that rightly. 
But for now, mind training is our greatest need and we have each other and we've joined together in this decision to pursue mind training to bring about a transition in our mind, a shift in our consciousness that will show us that our salvation is an actual thing in us and allow us a point where we can true up to it. Okay. Now, the point you have in you where you can true up to at the moment is I got nowhere else to go. Stay there. Stay in that place where that's true for you somewhere. Okay. I got nowhere else to go. Just for a moment, stay there until that becomes so critical that you actually hear yourself say it. Because the world is a big temptation. The ego will definitely dangle you a carrot tomorrow. And you will be tempted, which is why it's so important for you to hear this on the deepest level you can, so that you're not hearing it superficially, so that you don't continue to get distracted again and again and again by the offerings of the world. For the rest of your life, on earth, you're going to serve Jesus. For the rest of your life, you're going to be devoted to forgiveness. For the rest of your life, you are going to do the work. It's not going to end. It's not just 365 lessons. You're here to represent God now, and you're going to learn how to do that. Either that, or you still think you have somewhere else to go. This is rehabilitation. You've allowed yourself to be taught badly. And this is the best way we know how to get you back in track, back onto focus. Open your eyes. Look at all these other women here in this group with you. Look at them. They're going through what they're going through for you. They're making a choice. They're making a devotion to stay true, to stand up for something so that when somebody like you walks into the Zoom meeting, they're there for you. They got your back. They would give anything for you, the same as I would. I would give my life for you if it meant that you would find God. You've got nowhere else to go. Now, that's boot camp. That's total boot camp. Right? This is in the mud, down and dirty, the harsh reality of salvation. There is no world. There is nowhere else to go. There is no world. There's nowhere else to go. Stop trying to think there is. Your thoughts don't mean anything. Be still and know that I'm God. Be still in this moment and know that I am God. Any one of these people in this Zoom room would open their front door and let you in. Anyone. Come and stay with me, my dear brother in Christ. I know how difficult your journey has been. Let me give you comfort. Let me give you bless. What great honor would it be if you knocked at my door? Now, offer that to everyone. You have something in you that is so great to give. Something in you that is just waiting to leap out of you and extend to those in your world. Stop trying to hold it all together. Stop trying to be strong. Let it all fall apart and have an experience. It's going to happen anyway. 
It's going to happen anyway by the grace of God. I'm just telling you about it so that when it happens, you'll know what's actually going on. You'll stop trying to be strong more. Right? Don't defend yourself against your pain. All right? Don't adjust to your pain. Let it be painful. Let it be painful. Let life be painful. Oh, I see. All I have to do is stop defending myself and it won't be painful anymore. <laughs> it's literally the act of defending yourself that brings the pain. Because I'm reacting to what? My own thoughts. <laughs> Don't do that. Salvation is simple. Do only this. Resist not evil. Resist not evil. Don't defend yourself. I'm, I'm not going to defend myself, Lord. Well, you just did. Yeah. Right. As soon as you say, I'm not defending myself, you're defending yourself. I'm not going to defend myself. Yes, Lord. That's it. You just say yes. Yes, yes. Yes is surrender. It's like John Lennon's song. Yes is surrender. I'm a terrible singer. <laughs> Anna, you good with that? Good. Don't defend yourself. Don't defend yourself. Michelle, don't defend yourself. Those thoughts don't mean anything. If somebody's in your face, you're a useless, worthless, meaningless pile of trash. Yes. Yes, I am. Right now. The place between where, yes, I am as an idea that you're going to say because you think it's the right thing to say from A Course in Miracles, and yes, I am as a place where you feel it in your heart is two different places. We're learning to bring that together. We're learning to bring heart and mind together so that we're authentic. That's what everybody says these days. You have to be authentic. Right? You're a low life trailer trash piece of scum. I wish you were dead. That's cool. Now, the place where you can say that's cool just because you learned to say that's cool from A Course in Miracles and the place where you can say that's cool because you actually know that it's cool in your heart because nothing means anything, you've given what you see all the meaning it has for you, is two different things. The place where they come together, that's where we meet. Okay, the place between where it's just an idea that it's cool in your mind and the experience and the feeling that it's okay, it's, it's cool in your heart, all right? That's authentic, all right? Until then, it's just you trying to hold it all together. I'll just say yes and agree with them that I'm a piece of shit because that's what it says in the course, don't defend myself, all right? That's not agreeing. That's not allowing. That's not accepting. That's just doing whatever you think is the right thing because your own thoughts tell you to do that. It's like Willem used to say to me every day, you're an arsehole. You're an arsehole. And conceptually, I'd be like, yeah, I'm an arsehole. I know I'm the denial of God. Yep, yep, yep. And then one day it actually hurt. One day he said, I'm an arsehole and I felt it. I am an arsehole. I am. And I said to him, hey, man, that hurts. When you tell me that, that hurts. And he gave me a big hug. And he told me that he loved me. Because finally, I let something in. I stopped defending myself with a concept. I stopped trying to hold it all together and present the face of A Course in Miracles. I've got to be A Course in Miracles, not just present it as a concept and try to keep it together behind. You hear what I'm saying? Right. You can do this on the superficial level for such a long time and think that you're getting away with it, which is fake it till you make it. But when you actually hear it 
It's crushing. It's devastating. It's devastating. Right? Let yourself undergo that devastation for just a moment because there's freedom on the other side. Just on the other side of that release, that devastation that you're trying to hold off, trying to keep it together, trying to be strong. That's all the pain in the world right there. Give that to God. Give that to the Holy Spirit. Let him take that. That's his job, not yours. You're my heart and you're my soul. That's the only way I know you. You're my heart and you're my soul. I love you forever. I know who you are perfectly. I've seen you in the light. I've seen you shining brighter than a thousand suns. Radiant, eternal, loving and loved and warm. in a reality that has nothing to do with the world that we seem to see around us. That's how I know you, Ida. I know you as that. I know you as Ida as well. But out of those two ways that I know you, I choose to know you as the Christ. And if it were up to me and I could leap through the computer and pop into your head, I would show you what that is for yourself as well. But you have to do it. There's a beautiful poem by Hafiz that said, if I could show you the beautiful light of your being, you know, I don't remember the poem, but it's like, man, that when I read that poem, it's like I resonate with that so much. If I could just show you. but I can't, that's God's job. <laughs> but you have to meet the conditions first. You gotta let go. You can't do the bungee unless you're willing to step off the edge. Stop trying to be strong, be vulnerable, be defenseless. Let God be your strength. Let God be your strength. You don't need to be strong. You don't need to hold it all together. There is nothing wrong with falling apart. The effects of not falling apart is going to be a stroke or a heart attack or something going crazy, ending up at a homeless shelter. <laughs> Fall apart. Fall apart. I got nowhere else to go. Fall apart. If I had a stick, I'd be tapping it on the thing. I got nowhere else to go. That's a good thing that you got nowhere else to go. That's a good thing. That's the place you got to be. I've got nowhere else to go. I've only got you, Lord. Me and my father doing it together. Authentic. That's a good place. Let yourself fall into a screaming heap in that place. Let it happen, Ida. Let it happen. I got nowhere else to go. Stop trying to be strong. Your whole life, all you've ever done is try to be strong, trying to defend yourself against this whole collapse of everything that you think you think, which doesn't mean anything anyway. What the hell are you doing that for? Ready? Breathe. It's okay to fall in a heap.
I don't feel anything. I feel dead inside. I feel empty. Yes, of course you do. You're in a world that has no reality whatsoever, trying to find meaning, trying to find something. Never going to succeed. Of course you feel dead inside. Of course you feel empty. Surrender to that emptiness. Stop trying to be strong and defend yourself against it. Oh, I feel empty. That's what I feel. I feel something. I call it empty. It can't possibly ever really be empty because God is everything. Therefore, it must be actually God. What I call it doesn't matter. It's meaningless. Let me go into that emptiness. Let me go into that void. Let me go into that dark place, that fearful place inside that I'm trying to keep myself separate from. This is a journey into fear. Are you going, Gemma? Don't fix your hair. Oh, you're going to bed. I forget what time of day it is over there. I haven't even started to pick on you yet in boot camp and you're already off. <laughs> you're out. Get out. <laughs> yeah, it's I love you. Sleep well. At night. Love you. Thank you so much. 9 30. 11 30. What does that mean? 11.30 p.m. It's meaningless, Dave. Right. I'll do this all day. Funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sweet well. Lots of love. I think Anthea's, Anthea's already gone to sleep too. I can't see her. In the, oh, there she is. No, nope, she's up. Oh, <laughs> look at that determination on her face. All right. Well, Bye -bye. that'll be... We're going to do a little light circle and then uh, I'm going to have some breakfast. I was going to do the whole session today as a light circle, but it just hasn't panned out that way. So thank God that I'm not in charge and spirit is. Are you off too, Anthea? No, I, uh, can I ask a question, please? Oh, go for it. Yes, ask um, a question. This place that, you know, you're talking about, there's nowhere else to go. You know, I have been in that place right and i feel at that time you know i really had nowhere else to go and i feel i really did get have you know what i believe was a holy instant right you know i i'm struggling to get back there because <sighs> The shit's bad, but it's not horrific right now. But I want to get back to that place. Right. And I'm not, just not sure how to do that. You have to stay in that place. But so that's this, is what I'm, so this is what I'm telling you, yeah. right? So what happens is you have a moment, you have a holy instant, and then your ego wants to make something out of it the ego instantly attempts to recover from it, okay? It'll rebuild the world. You'll have a collapse. Your whole life will fall into mm -hmm. a heap. I can't do this. Help me, God. And then the next thing you know, something miraculous happens. You yes. have an instant, you have a moment, and then you start to rebuild again. Yes. Okay? Now, don't rebuild again. But it's how like, can no, hang you on. exist in that absolute miserable, you know, state? And get on with well, your life. If you've, had a, if you've had a holy instant, it's not an absolute miserable state. If you've had a holy instant, it's the release of that total absolute miserable state, right? Stay in the release of it. Stay in that place in your mind, in that reference where you've had the release and carry that with you. It's like, oh, I'm free. Now, <laughs> am I going to rebuild another Tower of Babel? so that I can, it can eventually collapse. It's not quite shitty enough yet, but it's getting higher and higher, and eventually I'm gonna, it's going to, you know. And then I'm going to have another holy instant. What's the, point of, what's the point of rebuilding the drama of your life just so that you can watch it collapse again and again so you can stay in that place of grace from being relieved of the drama? Just stay in that place of grace. You don't need to build the drama up to... You know, you don't need an excuse to be happy. 
finally I've been relieved from all my drama and now I'm happy. You don't need, you don't like, just be happy for no reason at all. It's a choice, right? Carry it with you. The light is in you. Does that make sense? Right. You get to see what it is you do in your head. It's kind of cuckoo. That's why mind training is required. Yeah. Mind I'm training, so mind training. Right. You're insane. You're absolutely off your rocker. <laughs> Go and buy some cats. I told you. Crazy old lady in the street with cats. It's like that's what the mind does. It tries to recover. The ego takes a hit. All of a sudden, you're able to drop your allegiance to the ego for a second and you see something that's completely beneficial to you in the moment, right? By the grace of God, you see your whole way out. You have a holy instant. The next thing you happens is your ego goes, right, what can we do with this holy instant? I feel so good, I think I'll open a business. I feel so good, I think I'll start a new relationship. Wait a minute. You've only had one holy instant. What are you going to do? Rebuild another relationship, another work ethic based on one moment of clarity? That moment of clarity needs to be your status quo. That moment of clarity needs to be your total clarity. Not I've had a holy instant in the past. We're learning to be the miracle. We're learning to carry that light with us everywhere and operate from it. So we don't have to keep getting back to that devastating place, devastating place, devastating place. Right. So when, when, the power. when you're kind of like speaking and you go, Woo! Yeah. <laughs> you know, where are you going? And, you know, why are you coming back from that? How are you like just not walking around like a nutter all day? I am walking around like a nutter all day. What are you talking about? I'm trying to hold it all together so I can talk to you guys. <laughs> you should see what it's like in my head. It's like there's a whole carnival going on in there of people on roller coasters going, woohoo! Like it's just like it doesn't stop. There's like a whole thing that happens, you know, like, sure, I still have my stuff I go through and I still have release of stuff and whatever when it comes up, but it's pretty rare these days. But I'm learning to abide in him. I'm learning to abide in God. Right? Abide. I'm learning to abide. I'm learning to stay there. Not visit there for a moment and then go back out and run my own show. I'm learning to stay there. Yes, Are you Lord. you staying there as, as one with everything? Right, exactly. Or staying there by and yourself? And you're, and you'll know that by your own sense of inner peace. Yeah. You carry the peace of God with you everywhere you go, mm -hmm. consciously or ignorantly. That's your choice. All right? You learn to be vigilant for the kingdom of heaven within you as your own state of inner peace in this world. All right? When it gets disturbed, when you get triggered, do the work. Don't push it aside. Try to be strong and hold it all together. Catch it in the moment because that's where it's authentic. All right? That's where it's real. That's where the rubber hits the road and you can't deny how you feel. If you backtrack on it until tomorrow, put it off till tomorrow. Oh, yeah, it wasn't that bad. I was making a mountain out of a molehill. No, catch it where it is. When you're standing in the supermarket looking at the baked beans, catch it right there. When you're standing in the line at the bank and you're frustrated about how long the tellers are taking, catch it right there. Like be Johnny on the spot. Be right there with your salvation, right? Because it occurs in the moment. It happens in the moment, here and now. It's not tomorrow. It's not yesterday. It's not maybe next week. The holy instant is a choice that I'm making, a choice that I'm choosing for every moment that I find myself not at peace. I can choose again. I choose again. <clears throat> I choose peace instead of this. I choose to abide in the love of God within me now rather than in my grievances, 
and everything else, and I'm going to just let all that go. There's no point in standing in the queue at the bank trying to hold it all together and be strong for the sake of what? For the sake of what? You have street people over there, I guess, right? You look at street people. They'll stand in the queue at the bank waiting for their welfare check and it'll be taking 10 minutes. They'll be having a freaking meltdown, right? Street people got no worries about trying to keep a false face and hold everything together. They're like, come on, you fucking... They'll be yelling out at the bank. You'll think they're drunk. They're not drunk. They're just being authentic. They don't care about ethics and being polite or nothing. They got their whole own thing going on. You know, you look at educated people. Educated people will stand in the bank fuming inside, but they won't say nothing. They won't do nothing because that's not polite. They're trying to hold it all together. <coughs> you get it? Now, I'm not telling you to yell at the clerk at the bank. I'm telling you to do the work in the place where you want to yell at the clerk at the bank but you've got to first admit to yourself that you want to yell at the clerk at the bank. Because <laughs> it's only yourself that you want to yell at. You've lost sight of the Christ. I think there's someplace else I ought to be rather than in this queue, shining the light of God around and being calm and peaceful in a place where everybody's probably getting frustrated. I've forgotten that I'm here to represent God rather than uh, I think I'm here to do God knows what. That's authentic. That's the place where you got to be at. That's where you carry the light with you. Even in denial, you carry the light with you. But now we have all these lessons and we have all this mind training so that when we find ourselves in a place where we're tempted to deny God's love, to deny the peace, we can do something about it rather than feel like we're a victim of circumstances. Get it? Don't rebuild the world. Jesus says to you, Anthea, give up the world and follow me. And you're like, yes, Lord. He doesn't mean just for like that second. <laughs> he means like, just keep following me. Keep following me. I know where I'm going. You don't know where I'm going. Yes, Lord, I'm going to follow you. What if I don't like the way we go, Jesus? Doesn't matter. Just keep following me. What if it gets dark and scary? Just keep following me. Have faith, right? This is a journey into fear. If it's not leading you into those dark places, you're not doing it properly. Right? But when you get to those dark places, do the work. Oh, I better forgive this or it's just going to pile up and then I'll have to pretend I'm being strong so I can keep following Jesus. Jesus will wait for you while you have a meltdown. He knows that's what's happening. He knows that you're going to be led into a place where you're finding those blocks to love's awareness in you. That's what's meant to happen, Eda. You're supposed to be finding the blocks. This is a journey. This is a crusade. Let's find them goddamn blocks and get rid of them. I'm sick and tired of living my life in the shadows. I'm sick and tired of feeling like I had a holy instant like a year ago and now what's happened? I can't get back to that place. Do the work. All right. The least I can do is open my book and read my lesson for the day. The very least I can do is that. I can get to my knees and I can talk to God. It's like, Father, I'm in a shitty place. I don't know how I got here. I've got no idea. I see that I'm still trying to work it out. Maybe I can get out of this somehow or whatever. But really, I just need a miracle. I need a miracle. I need something not of my own making, something that has nothing to do with my meaningless thoughts to get me out of this situation. I'm asking for that. And I'm not going to jump in and try to control it when you're trying to get me out of it. I'm going to stand back and let the healing occur, regardless of how emotional that's going to make me feel, regardless of what I have to go through. Right? Remember that you've asked for the miracle. 
If you forget that you've prayed for a miracle, you're going to still want to jump in with your own two cents. But you won't forget if your asking was true. If you offered that prayer from the prayer of the heart in gratitude for God's promise already fulfilled in you, you won't forget. Let me just get the hell out of the way and let God solve this problem. I don't care what happens to me as long as the greater good is served by whatever occurs in the framework of me letting go of control here because I'm tired of holding it all together. I'm tired of trying to be strong. I'm tired of, tired of trying to present a false face of myself. My true face is devastating in its brilliance, in its beauty, in its radiance, in its glory. It's devastatingly awesome. It has nothing to do with these wrinkly old things that seem to, that's not your face, Eda. That thing you look at in the mirror, that's not you. That's just a body, just a vessel, just an avatar. I mean, honestly, who could look at these things in the mirror and be happy? It's like there's like one, one in a million of us gets to look like Gwyneth Paltrow or um, Halle Berry or any of those guys, you know, like the rest of us just like do the best you can. You know? <laughs> right? It's just an avatar. It's just a body and a story associated with it. It doesn't have to mean anything unless you want to give it a meaning. And then if you do, you're going to get the results of your own thinking, giving it that meaning, and you're going to suffer by it because you can't have the yin without the yang. Take your hands off the wheel, let go, let it all fall in a heap and let something else happen that has nothing to do with you. And that'll be refreshing. Might be scary for a second but it'll be refreshing on the other side. Like, oh my God, that was so great. I just let go and now it's all, I don't know what happened. Something else happened and, uh, you know, I'm free. I feel so good. I'm in that place where Anthea was in 25 years ago, whatever, where she had a holy instant and been looking for it ever since. It's in you now. It's in you now. <laughs> Meditate, sit quietly, feel, let yourself go into the silent place. That's what the mind training is for. Sit quietly and let those thoughts go. Try to hold yourself in the silence. Okay? Try to hold yourself in the silence where there's no thinking, no thoughts. If interfering thoughts come in, let them go. Right? You don't have to validate them, give them a thing, acknowledge them, whatever. You've already acknowledged them because there they are. Right? But just let them go. Return your mind back to God. Here I am, Lord. And stay there. Learn to sit in the silence. Now, that's going to get uncomfortable. Okay, That's going to get uncomfortable. At the point where you accept that that's what you're to do, it'll cease to get uncomfortable. It's only while you're still resisting it that it seems to be like, mm, what am I doing here? I've got my meaningless thoughts that give me the shits and I've got this nothingness in this silence that gives me the shits too. What, what's the point? Right? Stay in the silence. When you stay there without examining it, it takes just an instant and whoop, you'll be through the other side into the light. <coughs> That's where it's at. That's what we're doing all this for. I need an experience. It's not only possible, but it's essential. I need an experience of the light. Once you experience the light once, you'll be addicted. It's better than heroin. I don't know if any of you guys ever tried heroin. I've never tried heroin either, by the way, but I'm told it's the cream of the crop. So, but that's where it's at. I need a glimpse of the light, a holy instant that shows me something like a postcard from home. It's like peeking through the keyhole into eternity and you go, wow, wow, look at that. I didn't know that was in my mind. I didn't know that was it. Oh, where did it go? 
because as soon as you examine it, it's gone, right? Which is why the mind training, don't examine it, don't judge it. Just sit there looking like a kid looking through his parents' bedroom door keyhole, wondering what the hell all that noise is going on in there. What are they doing in there? It sounds like dad's killing mum. You guys never did that? <laughs> I remember as a little kid looking through the keyhole, saying, what the hell's all that noise? <laughs> Couldn't see nothing. That's in your mind. That's in your mind. Okay. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Your preoccupation is to sit here in this conscious band of association where the thoughts are just all about me, 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 my body, my body, spiritual stuff, me, me, I'm a spirit, I'm a spirit. What does that mean? It's nothing. It doesn't mean anything. Course in Miracles doesn't mean anything. But at least the Course in Miracles is telling you it doesn't mean anything. Why would I read a book that's telling me the book doesn't mean anything? What's the point? Because the purpose of the book is to get you to focus on something beyond the meaning you've given the book. It's not to make the book into an idol. It's to use the book for what it's for, to bring about a stillness in the mind where you can be still and know that I am God. Right? The whole point of this is to bring the mind to a stillness, to be still. Stop trying to hold it all together. Stop trying to defend yourself against that moment of stillness, against that moment of complete, total silence and emptiness and nothingness in your mind. Sit there for as long as you can in a listening posture. Imagine yourself listening for somebody's calling to you at the end of a very long, dark tunnel. Did I hear a voice? Let me, let me listen deeper. Let me listen harder into the silence. You can't do two things in your mind at once. Okay. If you're listening, you can't be judging. Right. If I'm listening, then my mind is open. I'm open to whatever is possible for me to hear for to come through from that at the end of the tunnel. I call it a tunnel, but it's really like a, I don't even know, a void. Right? Be still and know that I am God. That's the true work. Forgiveness just clears away all the flotsam and jetsam and the blocks and everything else. So that when I go into my meditative uh, attempts, I can be still. I'm not beset by grievances and judgments and thoughts that seem to be clamoring for my attention. The more I forgive, the less predominant those sorts of thoughts become. The more I forgive, the less insistent those sorts of thoughts become. The more I forgive, the less power over my awareness those thoughts have. Forgive, 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 listen, listen, listen. Forgive, 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 be still, be still, be still. Okay? Clear away the old world and listen for the new one. Clear away the old world and listen for the voice of God calling you home. My process was a little different. I had a I had a top down awakening. I don't know if it's made it any easier or uh, whatever. I've still been through the hell of my transformation, and like when I say hell, I mean it. It's been hell. I, I wouldn't want to have to go through it again for all the tea in China. But I had the experience first. Okay, I've been searching. I've been looking for God. I didn't really even consciously connect with the idea that I was looking for God. I was telling myself I was looking for God. I was looking for meaning, but I didn't really hear myself say that. I would wander in and out of churches and temples and mosques. I went everywhere. Everywhere I could, I went, talked to people, sat and read books, sat in meditation halls by myself and felt good, felt peaceful, felt whatever, still felt empty inside. I was like on the outside, looking in, always on the outside, looking in. How do I get in? How do I get to that place? Right? Until finally I gave up. Until finally I let go. 
I fell into a screaming heap on my lounge room floor, the dark night of the soul. I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't defend myself and try to pretend I was okay. I was done. I had nowhere else to go. It was me and God or that's it. I was done. And the next morning, God spoke to me from the sky, from my mirror, from under the bed, from everywhere. I heard the voice from everywhere. It wasn't a tiny little voice whispering, like, listen for the voice for God. It was like somebody screaming at me. Go to Byron Bay. Like a Cecil B. DeMille movie. You ever seen Cecil B. DeMille? And God talks to Moses. And it's like God's like this big Orson Welles kind of, Hello, Moses, like that. I guess that's how my mind interprets the voice for God. I don't know. An actual voice, an actual voice that had nothing to do with my thoughts about it at all. Then I found myself after the experience, I found myself back in the world. Here's a course in miracles. Now you've got to purify your mind. And I've been through hell. I've been where you're at, Ida. I know what it's like. 25 years down the track, I'm finally on the other side of something, or I think I'm on the other side of something. Maybe that's just more meaningless thoughts. I don't know. But I find myself in a peaceful place, constantly able to carry the peace within me, able to walk defenselessly through the valley of the shadow of death as all the pictures and images and things of my dream come at me. All the ideas of poverty and wealth and health and sickness and richer and poor and better and worse, all of these things come at me and I'm in the world but not of it in all those references. How the hell is that possible? By the grace of God. One day at a time, one lesson at a time, one breath at a time, just keep going. You're in the valley of the shadow of death. Don't stop. Just keep going. You'll get to the other side. There is an end. You will find perfect peace. Just keep going. Stay with Jesus. Don't let go of his hand. He's holding out his hand. You take his hand. Yes, Lord. That's it. Job done. Contract fulfilled. <laughs> He's got somewhere for you to go. You don't have to do sit-ups. You don't have to do crunches. You don't have to qualify. You come as you are. You come as you are. But you've got to let yourself be as you are. You've got to stop trying to defend yourself. Stop trying to hold up that false face. Here I am, Lord. I'm all fucked up. I'm really all fucked up. I don't even know how fucked up my fucked up goes. I don't know how deep that goes, but I'm fucked up. I might only be dipping a toe on the surface, but I'm willing to just get to the bottom. Let's get it done. Let's just get it over with because I'm tired of it. Let me go into that place that I'm fearful to go and have an experience. It doesn't have to look like a major meltdown. It doesn't have to look like anything specific. Stop trying to decide in your mind what you think letting go is going to look like. It could look like getting off the bus. It could look like washing the dishes. It can look like anything. It'll just happen when it happens, but it happens only by your willingness because you have free will. You give the word, the Holy Spirit will sort it out. Father, I want to come home. I want to wake up. I'm done with the world. I'm done with my troubles, my stories, my drama. One day after the next, after the next, after the next, after the next. I'm done trying to be strong. I'm here.
Now, whatever lesson you guys are on today, do your lesson. Do it from that place. Do it where your salvation means something to you. Don't do it because I've got five minutes to do it now before I have to go and have coffee with my friends. Fuck your friends. Fuck the world. Fuck everything else. Let the whole world be banging on your front door telling you you got stuff to do. You just stay with Jesus. Hold his hand. Do those lessons like there's no tomorrow. If you can stay in that place, if you can find that place every time you take a breath, you won't have a problem again in the world. You won't have nothing. You'll be in the world, but not of it. You're free. The idea that you're free, the concept that you're free, and your freedom will line up. Live from your spirit. Live from your spirit. Nothing else matters. Truth is true and nothing else matters. Nothing else. Vivian, nothing else matters. Don't nod at me. You don't even know that. Don't be nodding your head. No, you don't. No, you can say, stop defending yourself. You don't do that. Nothing else matters. Bibiana, you going? I need to go. Okay. Beautiful. Awesome. Thanks for joining. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. If you knew that it mattered, Vivian, you would watch The Matrix. You would have watched it three weeks ago. It'll be on the top of your list. I've got to do that. Right. See that place in your mind where you just realize that? Right. That's where it doesn't matter to you. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That place between where you know it matters but you won't let yourself connect with the fact that it matters, right? If Jesus said, take a step with me, oh, I'll, do, I'll do that next week. I'll make a note to do that. No, no, no. Step with me. Anna, same thing. Take a step, take a step, take a step. The trouble that happens with uh, in a direction when you hear stuff, it's like, and I have this classic example of the girl in the sand dunes. I know I've told you guys this story where I heard the Holy Spirit clearly say to me, go up into the sand dunes here. I heard the words. I heard it in my head. I stopped to question it. Why, do I, why, did, why would I go up into the sand dunes? I had to stop there and have this verbal conversation with myself for a second. And then I realized, I'll just go up there. I'll find out when I get there. But I didn't just say yes instantly. I didn't just say yes and let that happen. I dilly-dallied around wondering why the hell the Holy Spirit would want me to go up into the sand dunes. Why do I feel so directed to go up there? You're not going to know till you find out. You're not going to know till you say yes. You're not going to know till you actually go. Anything asked of you, anything. Do this, do that, go here, go there. Yes, Lord. And then be about it. Yes, Lord. And then be about it. Nothing could possibly be asked of you unless it was God that was asking. Through me, through your next door neighbor, through anyone. Yes, Lord. I'll do that right now. I'm onto it. Give up the world and follow me. Yes, Lord. You're learning to say yes. You're learning to surrender your will to God's. Not my will, but thy will be done. Not when it suits you, but when God calls. All right. I love you guys. We'll call it a wrap there, huh? Peter, you good? I know I've been picking on you a bit, but 
Thank you, Dave. I miss you. I'm always here, you know. Yeah. In your heart. Just like that, yeah. Just you're not far away. I just. Uh, right. It's just everything that you said, as if you know everything. I don't know how do you do that. I do know everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one thing to know, and that's what you are. Yeah. You know that, and you know everything. Yeah. And, uh, you know the you know the most difficult thing that I have is trying to express that everything I know in form. Trying to say something that's true out here in a world where you know it's going to be corrupted as soon as the things that are listening hear it. I tell you, I love you. You instantly wonder what do I mean by that? You know, it makes me cry instantly. Right, good. That's because you're feeling it in your heart. Yeah. I do love you. Anna, I love you. Tina, I love you. Anthea, wherever you are there, I love you. There she is. Vivian, I love you. Michelle, I love you. We're one. How could I not love you? We are one child, one being. It has nothing to do with our bodies. We're all one. One love, one heart. Let's get together and feel all right. Hear the children singing, one love. Get it? Thank I love you. you. Get some sleep. And do your lesson. Do your lesson from that place.